Senior Bowl week has come and gone, which means it's the perfect time to break out my latest Washington Commanders mock draft. This time we're up in it from three rounds to the full shebang, the full seven round mock draft. I've got a bunch of great sleeper picks towards the end of this draft today, so make sure you guys stick around to the end of today's show. But before we kick things off here for this third edition mock draft of this offseason. You guys can check out the other two uh, on the channel that are we're going to put in the comments and description of today's video as well. But also, here, help me out here real quick before we get things going today. My bosses told me that we need to get at least 500 likes on this video, and if we don't do it, we can't do another mock draft for the rest of the month. So no more mock drafts all the way until March. But if we can hit 500, we can do another mock draft for the Washington Commanders next week. I love doing these mocks. If you love seeing them, make sure you click that thumbs up icon right now. And with that, oh my God, we're getting a call right now from Chicago, and they're telling us that Caleb Williams doesn't want to be a bear. He wants to join his former QB coach in Cliff Kingsbury right here in the nation's capital. So this is what they're offering us right now. In exchange for the number one overall pick, we give them the number two overall pick. We give them their original second round draft pick, number 40 overall, back to them, and they want an additional first round pick in 20. 25. Now, for me personally, I think I am absolutely taking this deal. And with that number one overall pick, of course, it's going to be Caleb Williams, okay? Because Caleb, in my opinion, is the best quarterback prospect I have ever evaluated for the NFL draft. And I've been that go for me, that goes back to 2018. All right, so that's better than Joe Burrow. That's better than Trevor Lawrence. That's better than anybody else that has gone even number one overall since the time I've been doing this. Caleb Williams is a special, special thrower of the football. And I think the Washington Commanders, especially because he's from D.C., he'd be joining an offense here in Cliff Kingsbury where he already knows the verbiage. He ran this offense the last two years at USC. It would be like uh, putting on a glove, right? It would be like riding a bike for him. It would be a perfect transition point for him to come into the National Football League. And when I watch Caleb Williams on film, he has some of the best arm talent I have ever seen any quarterback have ever in this process. The arm talent is unbelievable. He can throw from any platform, from any arm angle, at any time. It is simply incredible to watch this guy. And it's not just the arm talent. It's the playmaking instincts as well. Understanding coverages, understanding how everything is breaking down and solving problems extremely quickly on the fly. I mean, that just shows how intelligent this young man is. And I just think that it's like Mahomesian S, Josh Allen S. I just think that he's that type of quarterback. And in the National Football League, your goal is to get one of those quarterbacks first and foremost because you have to beat the guys like Mahomes. You have to beat the Lamar Jacksons of the world. You have to beat the, jo the Josh Allens of the world in this league. And Caleb Williams, especially in the NFC, guys, where there's not a whole lot of like really high-end quarterback talent, Caleb Williams could be the best quarterback in the conference within two to three years. And I absolutely think that that is worth trading up for. Now, he does have some issues with fumbles at times because he likes to hold the ball in one hand, and, you know, sometimes uh, he'll pass up an open receiver within his read to go out and try to make a bigger play outside of the pocket, but I think that can be reined in, all right? It was reined in with Mahomes. It was reined in with Deshaun Watson. It was reined in with Josh Allen, and I put Caleb Williams in the same kind of category as those guys, and I've seen plenty of examples on film of him having perfect pocket footwork the best pocket presence I've ever seen in a college prospect. This guy is absolutely special, and if you bring him in, it's going to completely change your life as a Commanders fan here. So for me, it's completely worth the trade-up. It is worth giving up that second-round pick this year. It is worth even giving up the first-round pick next year because, I mean, you'd, you'd give up two first-round picks to get a guy like Caleb Williams. He is absolutely worth that price, in my opinion. So for me personally, in my personal opinion, I would take the deal. But let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. Would you accept this trade to move up one spot to the number one overall pick to take arguably the best quarterback prospect of the last decade? Type A for accept or type D for decline. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. What do you guys think? This is also going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. All right, so now let's talk uh, about uh, day two here. Of course, you've got the number 36 overall pick. And I'm going to have the commanders go corner here because I don't think they're going to bring back Kendall Fuller. I don't think he's a particularly good fit 
for Dan Quinn's kind of press man heavy, heavy system. So in that case, you got to get a running mate for Emmanuel Forbes here. And I think Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama is a fantastic fit for the Washington Commanders. I think that he's big. He is long. He's got incredible uh, recovery speed as well, and he's very, very physical against screens and against the run, which is something that Dan Quinn really, really likes in his corners. I think that he's very aggressive, which is something that Dan Quinn likes in his cornerbacks as well. And if you have Kool-Aid McKinstry and Emmanuel Forbes, two guys with extremely high upside, two very aggressive corners to go out and get interceptions uh, for Dan Quinn and his defense, I think this would be a really good cornerback tandem that could be uh, here for the next decade here in Washington. Now coming up here, rounds three through seven. Of course, the commanders don't have that number 40 overall pick because we traded it to Chicago. But coming up here, I got rounds three through seven to break down with you guys. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. If you're looking to spice up your Super Bowl viewing experience this Sunday, get started with Prize Picks, which is a skill-based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. Uh, and you might be asking yourselves, Jack, how does it work? Well, here's how you play. Pick two to six players, and if they'll go for more or less than their prize picks projection. It's super easy, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So let's take a look at my entry for Super Bowl 58 between the Chiefs and 49ers. I'm an optimist. I'm going to take the more on Christian McCaffrey rush yards. And then I like both tight ends in this game as well. Travis Kelsey and George Kittle will take the more on their receiving yards in Vegas Sunday night. Now you can check it out right now. Get your picks in before Super Bowl 58 by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. At Prize Picks, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available on the Prize Picks app instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks that are just looking to take advantage of you. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. That's code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. So then we get into round three here, and let's go get a nice dynamic receiving threat at the tight end position for Cliff Kingsbury. Kind of fill out that Zach Ertz role there that he had in Atlanta, or in Arizona, I should say, with Jatavian Sanders, the tight end out of Texas. Now, there's a lot being talked about uh, with Georgia's Brock Bowers nowadays, talking about him being a, one of the best tight end prospects we've ever seen. And you know what? He's that. He's really good, all right? But Jatavian Sanders, at least in my opinion, isn't that far off of Brock Bowers. He's nowhere near the blocker. But as a receiver, Jatavian Sanders is seriously explosive out of his cuts for someone that size. And I absolutely think this guy is going to be one of the more premier uh, receiving threats at the tight end position here, especially two, three years down the line when tight ends usually develop. So right now, if I'm the Washington Commanders, you have time to develop players. Jatavian Sanders is the type of game-changing receiving tight end threat that can completely change Cliff Kingsbury's offense and, change, and, and be a real safety blanket for Caleb Williams over the next several years. Then uh, for the second third round pick here, pick number 11, I'll take a center here to start for the Commanders next year. Cedric Van Pran, the center out of Georgia. He's been slipping a little bit with guys like Zach Frazier and Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, really establishing themselves as the top two center options. But listen, man, I still think Cedric Van Pran is a day one starter in the National Football League. I think he'd be fantastic as a pass blocker. His tape at Georgia shows that. So if you can get him at pick number 100, I think that's a real good value for this football team. Then you get to round four here. One of my sleepers that I talked about on yesterday's video, you can check that out, put the link in the comments and description of today's show, Mohamed Kamara here, edge rusher from Colorado State. And I compared Kamara here to Shaq Barrett, another Colorado State Ram uh, that was kind of, kind of a sleeper when he came out, but he was one of the more productive edge rushers of the last decade in the National Football League with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Muhammad Kamara could do something similar. He's extremely intelligent. He was dominant uh, his final season of college football. I love what this guy brings to the table, both as a pass rusher and as a really, really smart run defender as well. Really good leader. Uh, had the opportunity to talk with him a little bit at the Shrine Bowl. This guy is extremely intelligent, extremely, extremely mature. I think he could potentially even be a starter in the league, and you're getting him here at round four, pick 102. I think that's a great 
uh, I think that's a great value for this football club. Then you get to round five here, and you might be saying, Jack, we haven't, we haven't gotten a tackle yet. Well, here's the thing, man. Uh, I think you're getting a really good one here at, the, uh, you know, here at the beginning of round five with Christian Jones, the tackle out of Texas. He was one of my favorite tackles at the Senior Bowl. He arguably had the best week of practice in terms of true one-on-one -on -one reps against pass rushers. He was fantastic, uh, and he's somebody that I think you can plug and play as a right tackle in the National Football League, and I think he, he, he definitely survived. I think that in round five, you're getting a good starting right tackle in the National Football League. That's absolutely something I would do. Right now, the uh, Pro Football Focus ranks him like 132nd overall uh, in terms of their overall big board right now. Uh, I think he's going to probably rise up, this, uh, up the big boards here uh, as we get closer to the big day in Detroit, but for right now, he seems like he's around this range so if I can take him in round five I am 100% pulling that trigger then in round six we get uh, somebody with kind of a blue blood blue blood pedigree here he was a top 20 graded inside linebacker two years ago with the Ohio State Buckeyes and that's Tommy Eichenberg the inside linebacker from the Ohio State University kind of had an, a down year last year for sure there's a reason why he's being projected as a day three pick, but right now we haven't addressed inside linebacker. And I don't think you're really going to start Eichenberg year one, but he's somebody you can hope develops into a starter uh, in, in future years. I think he's got the physical profile that you look for, and then you could probably address the inside linebacker position in free agency instead of the draft. Then we get to round seven here, and one of my favorite sleepers this year, somebody that I'm really going to be keeping my eye on here, somebody that Pro Football Focus doesn't even rank on their big board right now. He's that much of a sleeper, and that's Garrett Greenfield, the offensive tackle from South Dakota State. All right, you look at this guy's film from the Jackrabbits last year. I know it's against lower-level competition, but he was straight-up dominant. He's got the long arms you look for. He's got the frame you look for. He's got the foot speed that you look for. This guy has all the physical tools that you look for for a franchise left tackle. All right, and this guy right now, according to all the big boards, you could potentially get him in round seven, maybe even as a UDFA. That's absolutely crazy to me. And this is absolutely somebody that I feel strongly about. And if you're getting him in the seventh round, along with Christian Jones, you might be getting a decent tackle duo here. At least one of these guys is going to end up being a good starter for you. And you're getting both of them on day three. So if I'm looking at this right now, and I'm Adam Peters, and I'm Dan Quinn, and I'm walking away with both Garrett Greenfield and Christian Jones on day three to fill out my offensive line for 2024, I'm feeling damn good about that. So let's take a look at this mock draft haul that I've collected here for this first seven round mock draft. We bring in eight players, Caleb Williams, the best player in the draft, in my opinion, the best quarterback prospect I have ever evaluated. He's got the highest grade. We're bringing him in here, and I think he's going to be the best quarterback in the NFC by year two. That's my prediction with Caleb Williams right here in the nation's capital. Then you get Kool-Aid McKinstry, really physical, long corner, fast corner. That's going to be right next to Emmanuel Forbes on the other side of the formation. Good luck having to deal with those two guys for the next decade. Then you get Jatavian Sanders to be a really great dynamic tight end receiving threat for Caleb Williams for many years to come. You get your starting center in Cedric Van Pran. You get a really good edge rusher that can be a good probably rotational piece for you. Day one in Muhammad Kamara. Then you get Christian Jones, somebody that could potentially start for you at right tackle if he has a good camp. Tommy Eichenberg, who's got the pedigree to potentially be a starter someday in this league. And then you get Garrett Greenfield, the offensive tackle from the Jackrabbits, one of my favorite sleepers and could absolutely be one of the biggest steals in the 2024 NFL Draft. Now, how'd I do? Let me know down there in the comments section. I'm sure if you don't like Caleb Williams and you don't want the Commanders to trade up, you probably hate this mock draft, all right? And that's okay, man. There can be some differences of opinion. I'm going to be putting out a lot more mock drafts, and I promise you not all of them is going to be trading up for Caleb Williams. So uh, if you don't like this one, hopefully the next one will be better for you. But let me know down there in the comments section, A, B, C, D, or F, what are your thoughts on my first seven-round mock draft of the 2024 offseason? And if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you click that subscribe button because we're going to be doing more Commander's Mock Drafts. For sure, uh, if we get 500 likes on this video, we'll have one next week as well. Uh, but if not, we won't have one until March. But we're going to have a lot of Mock Drafts for the rest of the 2024 offseason, no matter what. So make sure you click that subscribe button. we got in-depth prospect analysis. We're going to have in-depth scouting report videos on all of the top quarterbacks. Uh, up on the channel here relatively soon. And then also the latest Commander's Draft Rumors. And again, 
You, send me, you click that subscribe button. You help us uh, help me get to Indianapolis there for the uh, NFL scouting combine. We could get exclusive interviews with Caleb Williams, with Drake May, with Jaden Daniels, all the top prospects that the commanders are looking at. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now to get the most exclusive and in-depth commanders draft coverage right here on YouTube, 100% free.